guys, it's Jamie, and uh, what I wanted to show you today was these um, simple hanging garden discs. So um, I came up with this. Well, I wasn't the original person to do this. These have been done lots of times. But um, I was in a sale last year, and one of the women did carved discs, and they were really pretty. So I, it kind of planted that seed in my mind. Um, so this last class session that I did, we did these on the side and we used them as glaze um, testers um, and also texture testers. And anyway, you can just, you can hang these up. Um, so I'm going to go, it's a very simple, quick um, thing to do. And maybe you just make one or two every time you're in the um, studio and pretty soon you'll just have a whole long strand. And speaking of strands, um, I do mine in like increments of odd numbers. So I do five or seven. Um, it just seems, uh, I, when I was in design school, they always talked about groupings in odd numbers. So that's why I did that. But anyways, let me get started. So here I have a uh, bit of clay and this is Sculpture Raku clay uh, from Clay Planet. And I rolled it a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch. So um, let me go ahead and do this last one here. And I'm not cutting it up perfectly the first time around. So I did it a little bit thicker because I'm going to do double texture on here. And um, so I know I'm going to be flattening out a little bit as I do that. Now, let me talk a little bit about this template that I've created. So this is just a simple circle from um, put on, traced out on tar paper. Um, the only difference is that I have a um, hole mark in here. And then um, to get the second hole, I just folded it over and then push through on that hole so that I could have them lined up. So now I have two holes that are equal. So you could say, why not? I do have cutters that are this size roughly. Why not just use a cutter? And you can, it's fine. Um, I just like having the hole here um, for marking my stuff. One of the things that um, came out in our class um, was, you know, when I created that strand, I liked to, I wanted it up against the fence. And then, so I didn't decorate the back. And then somebody was saying, well, why not? I mean, you don't have to have it up against the fence. Why not decorate the back? So um, I'm gonna show you how I do double-sided texture here. So I have a mat here. And once again, when you're thinking about the size of your discs, you can make them in correlation to the size of texture mats that you already have. There are smaller texture mats out there on the market. So when you choose your circle size, just think about what you already have and go with that. So what I'm doing here is this is one of these Wilton's, Wilton's dusters uh, for fondant and I'm going to um, put that down and I'm using the pony roller to smooth out and do my impression. Now for this one I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to take another little piece of tar paper and I'm going to do a mask. So I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to then take a roller and I'm going to roll off of it. So I start on the mask and then I roll out. And that leaves a nice blank spot there in the middle for me to do explore other designs. Um, so that's what the back looks like. This is cornstarch in this and it's just going to burn out so it's not a big deal. But um, what I will do when I finish this is after it's bisked, I will use some iron oxide stain to bring this out. And I'll show you that on my other stand when we do wiring. All right, so now I have this piece here. And I'm going to take my disc and I'm going to find my circles, or not my circles, my holes. And I'm going to line them up with this one in the middle here. And when I did that, I can see the holes here. So you could also leave it on and puncture the holes. But as I can see them, I'm just going to go with that. For smoothing, I like to use plastic. You can use fabric too. And then I also like to uh, roll it to get any kind of edges that are being weird set of brass cutters from Chinese clay art and um, this is a two I think this is two millimeter and this is four millimeter so that's a little over uh, an eighth of an inch 
So when you're picking out the size, um, you want to just make sure that it's going to be large enough to for whatever wire that goes through. So um, in the end, and we'll talk about that when I do the wiring part. All right, so as I look at this, I decide I think I want to have uh, maybe a window on here. So I'm going to just lightly use this credit card to create something here. So after I do several of these, what I end up doing is putting them to dry between wear board. So what that means is I have a piece of drywall here that I've taped off. I will lay down a piece of paper and then I will put the disc on here. So when I have my whole set done, I will leave them on this wear board and then I will take another piece of paper set it on top and then put an, a cover over it and, and then let it dry that way. So that's way it will become nice and um, straight, flat. All right, so that's that. Um, let me get into the finishing aspects of these discs. So as I mentioned before, um, I did put a finish on the back sides of these and um, what I ended up doing is, after it came out of bisque, is I put iron stain on it and then I wiped away. And so that left you with the image. And so now I have a pretty design on the back and on the front. So um, now to put all these discs together, I used copper wire. And I got copper wire off the spool at Osh, not in a package. Um, the stuff that comes in the package is generally not thick enough. So you can go with 12 or 14 gauge um, and um, you just, for me, I've in my experimentation, a little bit more than a finger's width is what is works for me, but you would have to do some experimentation on your own. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to just put the needle nose pliers around and I'm going to put it into a swirl. Now those of you who've done wire work before may have other ideas and probably something a little bit more sophisticated, but um, I did a swirl and then I bent it. So these are two discs that I'm going to join. I'm going to stick one in here and then I'm going to bend it a little bit. I'm going to then see where this comes in and kind of gauge where the bend needs to be right here. So now I bent it. Now I'm going to put this back on. So you can see the distance here. That looks really good to me. And then I'm going to take this and just do my curl. And then I'm going to bend it. So now I have two little swirls here holding these together. So I'll do that for each of the um, discs until they're all together. Um, the top bit, as you'll see, is has a little swirl and then what I do is I take the excess wire out and this one's a little bit longer than a finger length. I make a loop and then wrap it around itself and that's what will go on the nail. Um, the other thing to consider is what goes in at the bottom. So at this one I've left this disc uh, empty. It has the hole in it. So you could just create a disc without a hole at the bottom and then that's that. Um, but I, I kind of felt like um, when I was doing all these tests, I didn't know which one was going to be the last one in the series. <laughs> so I just put the hole there just to, you know, cover my bases. So if I was going to finish this one off, one of the things I could consider doing is um, creating a smaller swirl and then just doing a swirl on the other side. So here I'll create the swirl. and then I'll stick it through. And you, you could make this multimedia. I mean, you don't have to leave it all ceramic. You could add other things in here too, like shells if you wanted to. I need to work on this one a little bit more, but you kind of get the idea. I just would have a little um, swirl at the end and that would be it. 
All right, so that's a really quick video. I just wanted to share with you this experiment and um, so you can go out and enjoy and have fun with it. Catch you next time.